tonight. Goat grazing. They're all real good at their job. How the city of Nanaimo is using furry creatures to keep weeds away. Unwavering loyalty. She picked herself up and dragged herself to my car. A dog's paralyzing injury proves no test for the dedication an Nanaimo woman has for her pet. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. And our favorite animal stories from the past year. You yeah, sweetheart. Now, check news. Here's Monica Martinez. Good evening and happy Victoria Day long weekend. We have a very special show for you tonight. One of the many perks of living on Vancouver Island is our access to nature and with it, it's beautiful creatures. Whether it's an emu on the loose or a distressed eagle in need of help or a close encounter with a group of killer whales, animal stories have captivated our hearts and at times even brought communities closer together. On this holiday Monday, we are parading some of our favorite animal stories from the past year. The goat stampede at Beacon Hill Park is a daily ritual where the crowd gets to cheer on these goats as they make their morning and evening run. In Nanaimo, goats are coming up with a ritual of their own. It's not quite a stampede, but they are using their grazing skills to help out with a chore. Goats will taste just about anything. And they sure do like to eat. And while food might normally be the biggest cost, it's their munching skills that is making their owner money. A friend of ours suggested that why don't people use goats to clear weeds? It's a good idea mm -hmm. and it's green. Alan Iwanishin rents out his 10 goats to anyone wanting to clear vegetation from their land. These guys did this area in two days and there's lots and lots of brambles here. And lots of blackberry bushes too. It's their first job. And the goats are hard at work. They're all real good at their job. In a few days, the invasive plants will be cleared out of Nanaimo's Bowen Park. It's the first time we've used goats. We have used pigs a few years ago, but um, it's an experiment. We're really not sure if there'd be a, a a good tool in our toolbox, but we're looking for innovative ways to uh, deal with uh, managing invasive plants in our park system. It can be cheaper than employing staff to do the job, much quieter than machines, and greener than pesticides. But for the city, it's also a unique way to raise awareness about Invasive Plant Month. We have a number of events uh, for volunteers who are interested in doing some pulls in our parks. Both Nanaimo and Parksville granted the new company, Goats on the Hoof, license to work, even making an exception to the urban livestock bylaw. They asked for uh, an allowance to uh, do a bit of an experiment, so uh, we're following through on that. Not a bad job for these busy workers, nor for their owner, who is turning his biggest liability into his biggest benefit. Dogs may be man's best friend, but looking into their eyes, there's no doubt we are theirs too. The bond a Courtney woman shares with her dog Pippin shows the length we will go to for each other in the hardest of times. We go. From the moment that Evelyn Clark laid eyes on this little black and white puppy at the pound. That was it. I was in love. She knew theirs would be a unique bond. I put her down on the floor and she got down on the floor and she followed me and she never quit following me. Not nine years. She's just right there. It's a beautiful animal. Go get it. Even more since the agility partners have faced trials that few could have imagined they'd come back from. And she had no use of her hind legs. Complete, she was completely paralyzed. A year ago, Pippin suffered a paralyzing injury to her back that left her crumpled and crying out at Clark's feet. But then the Border Collie impressed this Courtney woman once more. Bless her heart, she picked herself up and dragged herself to my car. She didn't want to hurt me and she was in such pain she couldn't bear to be touched, so she just dragged herself to the car. The prognosis wasn't good, 
but Clark left no stone unturned in trying to help Pippin recover, seeking every option out there, including acupuncture and animal chiropractics. Medication that uh, the referring veterinarian had sent her on helped to decrease the initial inflammation, but uh, the acupuncture, I believe, was the cornerstone for getting her walking again. Pursuing traditional and natural medicine and spending thousands of dollars and countless hours on rehab. Good dog. There's a, a very big human-animal bond there. And before long, Come Pippin here. regained movement again Come on. in her legs. Celebrating their recovery earlier this month, Pippin and Clark competed in the special category at the Tailblazers Agility Trials in Courtney. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I was so proud at that at last minute when I reached down to pet her. I thought, look what we did. Yeah. The last hurdle in a trial that tested their bond, made in a pound and made for life some nine years earlier. That was awesome! Pets are part of our families and when they escape and go missing, communities step up to help in the search. Robin Kwasnicka lives in Japan but was back home in Brentwood Bay for a visit. The day before he and his wife were set to return to Japan, their precious pet escaped. People from all over Vancouver Island came to help in the search, and thanks to FLED, their organization that helps find lost or escaped dogs, Vicky was finally caught. Healthy and in good spirits, one look at Vicky's face shows you just how happy she is to be home. Oh, she's, she's doing really well. She, um, she was sleeping a lot. She has a fantastic appetite. A few pounds later, but still full of energy, the Boston Terrier proved she was not just tiny, but tough, surviving nine days in the western wilderness after running away from home. The last time we spoke to the Kwasnicka family, there hadn't been a sighting for days. And of course, when you go for two days without seeing her, you start thinking horrible thoughts. So there were definitely some really low points to that, to the last nine days. Posters went up. Volunteers from all over the island and even the mainland answered the call for help. So we had so many people come and help, which was wonderful. Finally, a neighbor did see her near one part of Gallantod Park. Kwasnicka moved the feeding station to that area and an infrared camera captured Vicky taking the bait. Boom, it was Vicky and it's like, oh, my heart kind of leaped out. <laughs> they set up the trap and hours later, she was finally caught. Now she's home. It was like such a relief. It just, like a huge weight had taken off, been taken off my chest. This panicky feeling that I've been feeling forever, it just, it was gone. It's just been great. We all slept last night. For the first time in nine days, we all got a good night's sleep. So that was great. Kwasnicka delayed his flight home twice. I would have been devastated if I had to leave early. But after a week of rest for both him and his now famous terrier, he can now finally return to Japan without leaving his most valuable possession behind. Vicky is happily back at home in Japan with her family and is active on her Instagram account, Property of Vicky. This photo is from Christmas. You can see Vicky is looking very cute and very content next to her Santa panda. In the woods, hikers expect to find wild animals bears, maybe even cougars, but a wolf on the trails? That came as an unsettling surprise to a group of hikers near Mill Bay. It's an easy hike, about an hour to get around the picturesque and largely unknown area of Rat Lake near Mill Bay. The scenery has been anything but relaxing for island hikers. It was scary, I was crying. <laughs> Diamond DeRoche was hiking by herself. What she found? took her breath away. I saw from like probably 10 feet away, the wolf was like crossing my path and it saw me and I like stopped because I was like too scared to do anything. It was staring at me. The wolf turned and looked, turned and looked again. I don't know how wolves react or any attackings, but uh, I was by myself and I really didn't feel like being attacked. So I right. just kind of was like, okay. <laughs> DeRoja backed away and left the area without further incident. But her wolf encounter isn't the only one. Customers here sharing stories too. They had a wolf come off the trail and start to follow them and their dogs down the, down the path. They said the wolf was about 30 feet behind them and uh, wasn't really acting um, 
in a ferocious way. It was just kind of following them and, and keeping an eye on them, I guess. There are fewer than 150 wolves on Vancouver Island, and though human encounters are rare, their presence is not unusual. Wolves are, are definitely around this area. This is their, uh, their natural territory. But after several reported sightings, conservation officers attempt to find the animal. When we see a wolf that is uh, starting to show an interest in people, you know, then that uh, sort of raises uh, a little bit of concern. Um, wolves are pretty solitary creatures that uh, generally don't want to be seen by people. Um, but at this point, you know, we haven't heard any signs of a from the wolf, uh, but have, it has shown some signs of curiosity. Most who frequent these trails don't seem concerned. I think the dogs will chase the wolf out of the area and the CO officers, they'll be up there if there's any concern. Conservation officers do say to keep dogs on a leash and if you see a wolf, back away, don't run and report the incident as soon as you can. The wolf was eventually found to be exhibiting atypical and potentially threatening behavior towards humans. It was trapped and humanely killed by a veterinarian on the advice of BC conservation officers. A hummingbird hobby leads a Victoria man to Alaska and... Okay buddy, you gotta come see us now. A fisherman rescues an eagle soaked and unable to fly away. The incredible experience all captured on video. We have those stories and much more still to come in this Victoria Day animal special. Stay with us.